Hi guys, it's Piggy from the Paper Bumblebee. Uh, I wanted to show you how I made these um, tags. I have three. Here we go. So maybe you want to join me. So let's go. Okay, what you need is just some book pages, old book pages, uh, some images. I just took these from an old book I had. I think I'm going to use these. Um, maybe some gesso. If they are really old book pages, you need some uh, matte gel medium or you can even use gesso just to strengthen the surface. Uh, you will need some some inks. Distress oxide inks work the best, but distress inks as well. Any ink actually. We're gonna do the smushing uh, method. Uh, I need some glue, some water, and then maybe if you want to use uh, some fabrics or threads or laces or whatever then you will need that as well and even maybe even a stamp i'm gonna stamp some lettering on on the tag and i'm also gonna use a stencil so what to do first you take your book page and you fold it uh, to the size you need the tag to be you can fold it twice and then you will get uh, quite a thick tag three times is also fine. I'm uh, just gonna have a look, maybe it's a bit smaller or narrower. Then I can get it to fold uh, two times, so then you have three layers. There we go. Okay, that's one tag, but let's glue it as well. Just glue everything down. You can also sew around it, but if you do not have a sewing machine, then you just glue it down. That's fine as well. And there we go. That's one. That's one. Got to do two more. one depends how many you want to make I just want to do three so I can let, I can show how I've done it There we go. Okay, so when you have a page and it did the overlap thing, you can all, always just snip that off. Okay, then you cut down your tag shape. Just want to snip this off as well. And we have a look. I think that's fine. And this one. Maybe slip off a piece of the bottom. 
two and the, the last one. Straight and maybe a piece of the bottom. Okay. Why is it different angles? Mm, I don't know. Okay, so we've got our three tags, and now you can prep your. If you've got old book pages, you prep your book page with some matte gel, gel medium. Then you need an acrylic block and your inks. I'm going to start with uh, Wild Honey. So you press your inks on the, on the block, on the uh, stamp in uh, your acrylic blocks. Spread some water and then you just smudge your tag in there till you get what you want on the on the tag. <coughs> That's two. And then you want to dry in between every layer. Some more yellow. Maybe some more on this one. You just do you and just put on uh, as much as you like. I will just quickly dry these three and then I'll be back. Okay, so now I want to use some green. This is forest moss. It's really a pretty color. Just going to use that. And make and do the same. Some more. I really hope you you join me in playing with this. This is so much fun. Just like a messy, nice and messy. Okay, then I've got some here. You want some more? Just spritz some water and. Let it go. Okay, there you go. Smush it again. So I'm just wondering, maybe just a bit more on this one. Okay, next color I want to use is, and this is a Distress Ink, and you'll see this will work as well, Aged Mahogany. Put it on there as well, some water, and go wild. And use your own colors this is just what I'm using for I want to make some full some um, autumn tags
Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so I dried this again and I was thinking of brownish color. And I'm going to go for a light brown, so rusty, rusty, rusty hinge. Try that, see if that's working. It's a more like a yellowish, brownish color. I really like that. Can't see much, but it's really nice color. Oh yes, I like. I like that. Just a bit. Okay, so now I'm not even gonna dry. I'm gonna go for a brown. Um, let me see. I've got ground espresso, vintage photo, walnut stain. Let's go for walnut stain. That's a bit of a darker brown. just gonna dry that so I just looked at my tags and I thought okay I need some more yellow so I'm trying to get some more yellow on the tags just take my wild honey again it was too dark Not too dark like brownish color and I want some more lighter colors to pop up as well okay and maybe we can even put some lighter green on there as well okay you just play with your inks until you are satisfied and when you're finished you may have some white or the page coming through and you might like it maybe you don't if you don't you can always go on smushing or you can do what i'm going to show you just now but if you do this make sure it's really uh, dry i will do just the one just to show you uh, i need my vintage photo there we go Oh no, let's take some tea dye that's a bit lighter take your makeup brush and you just go over the uh, white spots where your page is coming through and go over it with your tea dye and you will see them disappear over here it's just one small spot here and one here and on this one i'm gonna leave it for now okay now you want to decide what you want to do next um, you can take a stencil i'm gonna take this one with the circles and some gesso so just so on here and make some markings if you want to you don't have to I think I'll do it it's quite a nice working with a palette knife and just scrape over it like so and you get some markings 
Don't keep going and going and going for this is Distress Oxide inks and they will react on your on this wet um, gesso. Sorry, I just heard some noise. I was wondering what that was. Okay, and then on this last one, let's put some on this side. There we go. Okay, just take it off from your stencil, the gesso, I mean. Oops. And then dry them very well before you carry on. Okay, so your next step, if you want to, you can even emboss some of it or these marks or whatever. What I'm going to do now is take with my vintage photo and I'm going to take a stamp that is um, just scribbles and make some stamps on my tags. Okay, so you take your stamp and you ink it up and you just press here and there some word stamps just to get the some just on the back the texture and the interest on the tag. So when you've done that, um, what else can we do? Let's go for the stenciling now, I think. I'm going to use my vintage photo and see if that will work. Okay, so just take some ink and put your stencil the way you want it and go over your stencil with the ink. And if it doesn't work like I want it to, then... Okay, it's very subtle. Don't know if you can see it. The lines of the stencil. That's with a vintage photo. So now I'm going to use the ground espresso. Just going to clean my brush a bit. And try again. Put your stencil the way you want it. You can use any stencil you like. I like this one for it's autumn, it's trees, goes together. So, okay, put my stencil on there, take some ink, and go over the stencil. Okay, this one is darker, so I think you should be able to see this more clearly. Yes, there we go. So you can see the lines more clear. Let's do the last one. I'm gonna use the brush as is and just sort of clean it and take the ink on the stencil with as well. Then you won't get that dark impression, but a very good one you still get. I just love it. Okay, so when you've done that, you can still go embossing and do whatever you want to. You can, I want to do the Distress Mica Spray on there. It's a antique bronze, really pretty color. And I'm just going to spit some of it. Oh, that's too much. Just a bit. I want black splatters. So you can go ahead and do some gold splatters or black splatters or white even, just what you want. I'm just going to dry this quickly. Okay, I put on too much of the mica spray, but it's still pretty. Got, I don't know if you can see. Got really gold 
shimmering on there. Here I've got some nice splatters. This one as well. I might even go in a few when I'm finished and I'm not as, uh, satisfied. I'm gonna go maybe in with some gold splatter as well. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna have a look and see which of these images I can use where. Just gonna tear around these kissy kissy tear they call it. to fit there we go then we can go for this one okay I like it. this one it's too big. He's just going to make the mushroom a bit smaller. There we go. And then on this one, we can do, I think, this one. I love the warm colors. So I want to use the warm colors. The reds, browns. There we go. Okay, I think we're going to use it like this. So first, I want to ink around them. With my vintage photo. Okay, so ink around all of them. Now we want to just have a look and see if we want to put some fabrics or lace or anything underneath. So I've got this, let's see. It's like mute. Can use you can even if you think this color is not good you take your ink and you just distress your fabrics so you can use it underneath one of these if you want to you can even put uh, something red under there or on there. Got some red. I have even got some yellow we can use. And we've also got green, but I think this green is not good for this and I've got some brown lace let me see mm, I think this will be nice on here with some of the what should we do yellow or some red Do some yellow. <coughs> and we've got this one. Some yellow. Okay. 
also got some huge can also use and what else what else what else do we have some black thread times and we might even do some different color as well we've got this bronze color or we've got this gold color um, let's see we will do this color in the middle one and then this color with the the other two. Get the end of it. There we go. And this one for the middle. Just a bit less all over the place and more in one place so that you can see the color. There we go. Yep, let's stick that down. Some tacky glue. and then glue this and put it on top I think it will keep the thread in place there we go that's one then this one, gonna glue this down. Make this shorter. Then we got some black thread and maybe some of this bronze color. Okay, there we go, and then put some nice enough glue on the back. go pretty pretty and then the last one okay put 
this down. And we need some more color here. Take some of this. And stick this down. There we go. I think they're pretty. Now we want to do a topper. So what we can do is take some of this and maybe some of this red. This is Ute and then we've got some sorry silk and we make a topper out of this we're just gonna staple this on here with the mini staple so i think that's quite pretty and then this one we can use some i think maybe some ute as well And some of the yellow. Let me see if I've got some. Let's take a piece of yellow. And cover this and then put it on here. You can uh, sew around it, of course. I might even do that off camera. But for now, I'm just letting you, I'm um, showing you what you can do with the stuff you've got in, in your house. I suppose if you are a junk journaler, you've got some book pages in your home, some books with some images, some inks, I think, uh, stencils mm, you might have, and otherwise you can make some very easily. Just take a piece of cardboard or take a book page and glue it together and then take a hole punch and make some holes and you've got yourself a stencil. A stapler I suppose you've got and then I don't know, maybe you've got some fabrics in your house, some laces. You can use whatever you've got in your house at home and make these. There we go. So let me show you what we have made. There we go. And I might even go in with some black splatter or maybe even some gold splatter i will have to see what i think i think this may be some gold splatter this can maybe use some black splatter you can do some gold foiling or whatever color you want just going to ink the edges you can back them up with some coffee dyed papers and you've got a beautiful tag with journaling space on the back just going to stick this down quickly
so i really hope you enjoyed this this was really fun and really easy to make please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and if you want to receive notifications of when i upload again new videos please press the the notification bell it everything is free and i hope to see you again soon bye bye